Good morning. Welcome to the Gateway. Hope you guys are doing well. It's a good day to be at the church. Good day to be the church. Amen. So, yeah. Amen. So glad you're here. And glad you guys are joining us online, too. Um, this week is Thanksgiving. How many of you guys are looking forward to some turkey and, and uh, God forbid, Christmas music? <laughs> Christmas music season is starting. Lots of fun stuff to look forward to. Um, uh, a lot of things are going on, and a lot of us aren't going to be able to see our family this Thanksgiving. So I really want to encourage you guys that if you are around electronics, Zoom yeah. with your family. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, do the FaceTime call, do the Facebook call, do the telephone call. Yeah. <laughs> but uh, reach out and connect with people this week, especially this week, those who you can't see. And if the Lord puts somebody on your mind that you just need to reach out to, um, pick up the phone and call them and uh, yeah. do, do your part to stay connected. Don't wait for people to call you. If you're like, oh my gosh, I haven't heard from my kids and, and they won't call me. You know what? Pick up the phone and call your kids. Yeah, like, call right. them. Yeah. You know, I mean, it's okay. It's okay to bug them and, um, and let them bug you, yeah. you know. Um, sometimes I get overwhelmed and I'm like, I don't want to talk to anybody. I want to go home. Well, that doesn't always work. You know, we're tired, so. Um, earlier this summer, we did some meals for um, Kathy, um, a lady at the church here. She returned her dishes. So there's a box back there full of dishes, and Amen. some of them are actually pretty nice. So if you have dishes, uh, go check out that box and see if any of those are yours, if you're missing some dishes. So um, if you have enjoyed the church services here, and if you are enjoying your experience here, invite your friends. Yep. We are having services every Sunday at 10 a.m. Yep. We are also having services Wednesday at 530. Um, we have a really good time of uh, worshiping the Lord, meditation and prayer, yeah. along with just enjoying God's word and studying together, growing together as a community. Community is important, guys. Yeah. So we're very excited that we have each other to yeah. do life with. Yeah. So. Connection cards. Um, we're going to be doing a, another church directory here within the next few weeks. Um, but if you need to update your address, your phone number, your contact, if you need to speak with a pastor or if you want to plug into a ministry or if you want to start a ministry, I mean, you know, something you want to bless the church with. You ever been to a church and you've been like, well, well you know, I wish they did this. Right. Oh, no, they don't do this. You know, that communication card, you can say, I don't know why you don't do this. And then you can say, hey, I'll volunteer to do this. Would you like for me to start it for you? And we'll call you and then you can go start a ministry right here in the church. It's as simple as that. How's that sound? That sounds great. So communicating with us is really important. We value your communication. We want to hear from you. We want to connect with you. Um, I, I can be one of those people who will bug you up one side and down the other, so I have to like restrain myself. So, um, but you know, we don't always, we're not always able to connect with every single person, but nonetheless, we do want to connect. And this is a great way to do it. Um, write down whatever you need to. The communication cards are back there. Put them in the offering box and, and Dana and I will get them and act upon that. So. Um, and then also we want to pray for you. Um, prayer is super important. We have prayer here every Sunday morning. Um, prayer starts at about 930 and we go all the way up to the church service starts. So if you need prayer, we will pray for you. If you have a prayer request and you want to be a little bit less hands-on, you can write it on the prayer request sheets back there and put it in that special prayer request box on the back. And we have a really huge prayer team. And they'll get your prayer request yeah, and you will get prayed for. Yeah. If you have an answered yeah. prayer, you can put it in there and we'll post it on our praising yeah. wall. Yeah. Um, or if you have just a praise you want to share, there's a yellow paper that's a sticky sticky note. And you just put that right there on the board. You see all those praises over there on that yeah. praising wall? Yeah. Like, Amen. There's so much we have to be thankful for. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, so put your praises on that wall. And then if you want to be encouraged, go read the wall. Yeah. It's yeah. amazing. Christmas Peace for Parents. Um, this is an activity, um, an event that our youth leader, Autumn and uh, Andrew, have put together to help parents with kids under 10 years old. Yep. If you guys need to escape from parenting for a day to go Christmas shopping or to go have coffee yep. or to be alone or go for a walk, um, whatever the need is, um, we want to give you a little bit of a respite over the holidays, which can be hard to find sometimes. Yeah. 
So um, Autumn has more information about that. It's December the 12th from 10 a.m. to 2 in the afternoon. You just drop your kids off here with a, with a sack lunch and uh, a mind to play and have fun. <laughs> and, uh, and you can get a needed break. So we want to do that for you with a blessing. Again, if you have any questions, contact Autumn or um, Andrew. And if you'd like to help, they might need some help. You know, they might need some snacks or something. So plug into that. It's a great way to get connected. Your midweek oasis. That's our yeah. Wednesday night Bible study. Yeah, that's right. So yeah. it's cold, but this guy obviously is nice and warm. He's got his earring in. He's got his shade glasses and hat and a coconut. Yeah, that's what Wednesday nights feel like here, yeah, just so is. you know. The, the building's warm. Yeah. Um, we don't have coconut water and earrings and hats, but... Um, it's warm, and uh, we praise the Lord. We worship, and we um, get together and, and learn about God. So that's always good. The two, three ways to give, um, we uh, appreciate your giving. Um, giving blesses you, yeah. and it blesses us. It's, it's, have you ever noticed that um, a couple of different things? If you're depressed and you're suicidal, you know one of the things I say? Go knock on your neighbor's door and see if you can help them. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Like seriously, like that that's that's a big thing is yeah. if you're really down, get out there and help somebody else. Yeah. Yeah. There's something that happens to us when we give. That's true. Yeah. And tithes yeah. and offerings is one of the ways we give. Yeah. Another way we give is through our service to the church, through yeah. through ministries like people being greeters and people yeah. being host and um there's so many ways people give. And so um this is a great place to engage with that. Yeah. You know, that that's one of the beautiful things about the church is it gives you a way to give to others. If you want to tithe or give, you can do that three different ways. We've got an offering box back here. You can put a check there. You can also go online at gatewaychurchsquim.org. There's a, um, a secure donation, do donation button there that you can give. I've used that. It works really well. Or you can mail a check to 609 West Washington Street, number 9, Squim. So we appreciate your giving. So now we're going to have Dana come and speak. We're going to pray real quick. Thank you, God. Yeah. Lord, I pray you bless the time as Dana shares. I also pray for the children's ministry that you would bless Autumn and the kids that are helping lead and participating, that, that we would all just get what we um, came here for, Lord, fellowship, uh, hearing from you, and growing. I pray that whatever we hear today, that you would apply it to our hearts where it needs to be, yes. God, you. and draw us close to you. We receive from you and ask for your anointing and your blessing on the message. Amen. 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 Well, amen. All right, so we're doing a new mic this week. And this one's going to work perfect, I'm sure. Amen. Yeah. And so thank you for being here. Uh, we really appreciate seeing each one of you. Thank you for coming and sharing your life, sharing yourself, sharing all you are with us. We appreciate it. Amen. You know, the church is advancing on the earth in this season. We are advancing on the earth in this season. God is doing amazing things. Uh, I hear about them because I connect with I connect with another group of pastors once a month, uh, the group Regents Beyond we're connected with. And this past week I connected, there was 12 of us on one Zoom meeting uh, from all over the world, South Africa, Holland, uh, several parts of the United States. Um, I think there was two pastors from South Africa. But um, God is doing a lot in this season. Amen. You know, we, we see all the dysfunction and the stress and all that. But just so you know, uh, God is still in control. Right. And he's Amen. still doing stuff. And his kingdom is still expanding. Amen. You know? Amen. Yeah. We might be wearing a mask, but God ain't. I mean, God is doing what he's doing. So praise God. So, yeah, love it. And I'll adjust the screen. I know the screen was off this time, but uh, we were making room for a drummer. Amen. Yes, we are. <laughs> yeah. You got so much going on, we're trying to fit it all in. I love it. Praise <laughs> God. Amen. So, um, and you'll notice this week we did video worship. We're gonna, we're, we've adjusted the worship program a little bit per the governor's orders. So we have video worship this week. In the next few weeks, we're going to have one, uh, one person singing and then an accompaniment, which that meets his requirements. So we're, we're doing that. So just so you know, for the until after the 14th, we're going to. The, the whole worship team will not be up here, but part of the team will be after this week, you know, to meet the requirements. So that's why we've adjusted things a little bit. Amen. Amen. We're, we're rolling on. All right. Praise God. 
So yeah, so I've got a, a word that uh, I want to share with us today. Um, I hope that, uh, well, I just hope that it gets us jacked up and excited because that's what it's done for me. All right. So there you go. <laughs> Amen. Oh, and it's off the screen. It's uh, <laughs> it's Our Noble Name. That's the title. That's what you can't see up there on the ceiling. Our Noble Name. That is the title of the message. Our Noble Name. Okay. All right. So, you know, every Christ follower has a noble name. If you trusted Jesus as Savior, you have a noble name, an honorable name, a respectable name. Do you know that? You do. And I'm not just talking about, like, you know, my last name being Easterling or your last name. I'm talking about Christian. You know, Christian, that is an honorable name. That's a precious name. You know that? Uh, you know, a lot of people in the world say, oh, no, that's a bad name. No, you don't want to be, you don't want to do that. You don't want to wear that name. Well, uh, yes, I do. And yes, we do. Seriously, it's a privilege and honor to be called Christian Church. You, you just you just grab onto that and keep it no matter what you hear, no matter what you see. Being a Christian is an honorable thing. Amen. So let's keep going. I'm sorry, I started going down another trail here. Woo! Almost. <laughs> Almost. Uh, hey, give me one second. I was okay until it started messing with the scripture. <laughs> give me one second. Sorry, guys. I'll try not to overextend too much. Let's see here. There you go. Yeah. <clears throat> <laughs> Let's see. You're welcome. Yeah. Obviously, I've done a lot of work with all this stuff around here. <laughs> Praise God. So let's read, and we're going to see where, our, where the name originated, the name that we wear. It's in Acts chapter 11, verse 25 and 26. It says, Then Barnabas went to Tarsus to look for Saul, who was named Paul. Basically, Saul was Paul. It says, And when he found him, he brought him to Antioch. So for a whole year, Barnabas and Saul met with the church and taught great numbers of people. The disciples were called Christians first at Antioch. That's where the name we wear was birthed, in Antioch. The first time it was used. But isn't it interesting that they started calling the disciples Christians. You know, you don't just walk up to somebody and say, hmm, I think I'm going to call you something else. Do you? You don't walk up to somebody and say, well, I know your name's Bob, but I, I think you look more like a Mark. I'm just going to call you a Mark from now on. You don't do that. You don't just radically change an individual's name or a people group's name unless there's a really, really good reason. And there is a good reason. But see, to understand why the people of Antioch began calling the disciples Christians, we need to look at what a disciple is. A disciple, and this is the common definition, it means a learner, a student, a follower of Christ who learns the doctrines of Scripture and the lifestyles they require. So a disciple really is, is a serious uh, student of Christ, somebody who takes it seriously. You know, not just being nice and doing stuff, but also living according to the Word of God. So you have to live according to the Scripture, and you also need to have that relationship, which we talk about a lot, that time with God. And that's what a disciple looks like, okay? Um, but, you know, a disciple living and acting according to that definition would still be called a disciple, wouldn't they? They wouldn't be called Christian. This Christian thing's, you know, it's like, wow, you know, these people are following Jesus. They were living according to the Scripture, yet all of a sudden they got a name change. Huh. It's pretty neat. But, you know, Christian means literally Christ means the anointed one. Christ means the anointed one. And Christian means the anointed ones, plural. So the, the group in Antioch, you know what they did? They saw the anointing. They saw the anointing. That's what changed the name. <clears throat> it wasn't the fact, oh, yeah, this group is they're following Jesus. See, there was plenty of disciples. There were disciples of the Pharisees, disciples of the Sadducees. You know, there were disciples of, of, of all these different things going on at that point. And there were disciples of Christ. But for them to be called Christians, there was something beyond the scope of just being a follower and a student of someone. They saw the anointing. They saw the anointing. And so, Christians, we are the anointed ones. We are the anointed ones. Mm. 
but I want to talk a little bit about what happened for the people of Antioch to change the name of this group that they had been witnessing. What happened? And it's, it's really neat because it's, and it's actually locked up in right here, called. The disciples were called Christians. Call doesn't mean just to, you know, to speak forth or to say forth. It's neat. Call here in the Greek, it means supernaturally revealed. Ah, isn't that neat? Supernaturally revealed. So the disciples were supernaturally revealed as the anointed ones first at Antioch. Isn't that neat? That's so cool. Now we're going to look at just verse 26 in a different translation here. This is Acts 11, 26, the second part, so I just went with the, the passion. It says, it was at Antioch that the followers of Christ, the followers of Jesus, were first revealed as anointed ones. That's really interesting. Something had changed in these disciples' lives. They were walking in a new grace and a new power. They weren't just following the Messiah. They were expressing the power of the Messiah. That's different. That's a big change. Mm. You know, those people of Antioch, they, they, they were experiencing God's anointing power through those disciples. And I'm sure it started like, whoa, these disciples ain't like no disciples we ever seen. We got to change the name. We got to call them something else. Because they walk in a different power now. So we're going to call them the anointed ones. So every time somebody says you're a Christian or you say I'm a Christian, guess what? You're saying, oh yeah, I'm, a, I'm an anointed one. I'm an anointed one. I'm anointed. I walk in the power of Jesus Christ. Hmm. But you know, Jesus is the one who anoints us. He's the one who gives us that power. He's the one who flows through us. He's the one who does all that stuff that, that makes people say, wow, whoa, something different. You're not like uh, this person, that person, or that group. Hmm. So let's talk, I want to talk about the anointing for a while. Um, you, don't, you don't hear an awful lot about the anointing, but I want to talk about the anointing. I haven't talked about it in a long time. So let's talk about the anointing. We're going to have to look at some other things, but I really feel like, once again, I feel like this is a, a good word for us today. So Jesus in Acts 1, in our chapter 1, verse 8, Jesus tells his disciples and his followers, says, but I promise you this, the Holy Spirit will come upon you, and you will be filled with power, and you will be my messengers to Jerusalem, throughout Judea, and the distant provinces, even to the remotest parts of the earth. And I'm sure Washington fits in that. <laughs> Amen. But see, see, when the Holy Spirit comes in your life, he doesn't just come in here to help you, you know, break bad habits, to help you make good decisions, to help you live a certain way. He brings power. He brings power. When he comes to live in you, he brings power, the power of God. That's why the Bible says, not by power, in other words, not by this, or by might, your determination, but by my spirit, says the Lord. His spirit will do what we can't. And his spirit will meet needs we can't. His spirit will touch lives we can't. His spirit will get right into that spot where the person's at and give them exactly what they need from the Lord. Yeah. Whenever we can't even see what's going on. Yeah. Mm. But see, when God the Holy Spirit comes into a believer's life at salvation, or the baptism of the Holy Spirit, uh, and he starts living in us, guess what? Right now, if you're a believer in Christ, you are anointed. To the sitting in this chair, you are anointed. Because the Holy Spirit's living in you. And the Holy Spirit ain't weak, church. He's not weak. Let me share something that, that I feel like the Lord showed me about two years ago. I was visiting with the Holy Spirit, and I was just talking with him. Okay, I was just talking with him. And I was just curious because, like, I said, what do you like? Yeah, because, you know, on our best day, we know about that much. Yeah. I said, what do you like? And in a minute, just in an instant, I feel like he gave me a, what I call a movie trailer, a little small vision. And what I saw was I saw this little boy about that big, probably about four years old, looking up at me with just these eyes like, and what I heard in my spirit is, I am like this little boy. 
I hope the best. I believe the best. I think the best about you. I love you no matter what. I'm always happy to see you. And then an instant, I saw the biggest volcano I've ever seen erupting and blowing lava everywhere. He said, I'm also like that. Isn't that the Holy Spirit? He's, he, he unconditionally loves us. He just cares so much about us. But please don't be mistaken. He's also the most powerful force on the earth. That's who lives in you. Do you know that? That's who lives in you today. Right now, if you've trusted Christ, you've got the friend that sticks closer than anyone who loves you, who always believes the best, always hopes the best, always thinks the best. He's always glad to hang out with you and see you. Always. On your best day, he's happy to be with you. On your worst day, he's happy to be with you. Do you know that? But the whole time that he's in that place of just caring and loving and taking care of us, there is the omnipotent God there too. He's all powerful. He can do anything. But you know, um, that's what that's what we have. And I, I might say I remember that all the time, but I don't. Yeah. There are times when I step into a situation or, or see a need, and and I will pause. I mean, it happens occasionally. I pause, say, "Huh, what do I do with that?" Instead of just stepping in and saying, "God, you got it." Yeah. But you know, the whenever we we walk in that place. But you know. Whenever God comes to live in our life, the Holy Spirit indwells us. He fills the temple. The presence of God is here. Okay, the presence of God is here. And where his presence is, his glory is there. Okay, so I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm going somewhere with this, so stay with me. I'm going down around a little curve here. All right? Whenever his presence is in a place, his glory is there because his glory is his presence and his presence is his glory. They're exactly the same thing. You can't have his presence without his glory. And you can't have his glory without his presence. So you have the glory of the Lord in your life. You have the presence of the Lord in your life. Okay? Um, <laughs> hallelujah. So God is in you. But you know how, whenever God's glory, his presence is in per a person's life, do you know how it, it manifests, how it reveals itself? The anointing. The anointing. God's glory, his presence, and the anointing are not the same thing. So stay with me. Amen. Amen. The anointing is the manifestation of his presence. Okay? If you're a believer and dwell by the Holy Spirit, guess what? You are filled with the glory of the Lord. And the way people see that and know that is the anointing will touch their lives. The anointing. You are anointed. Mm. You know, God's presence is his glory, but the anointing is his power. It's his power. It don't matter what the need is. It's enough power to, to help, enough power to take care of it. That's what the anointing is. It is whatever's needed, God is enough. That's the anointing. Mm. Praise God. So I want us to, let's read this. This is a little something I wrote. Oh, it's almost out of the screen. I think we can do it. His presence in us produces the anointing upon us. And when the anointing upon our lives touches someone else's life, it produces a desire in them for his presence in their life. Isn't that neat? His presence produces the anointing, and his anointing produces a desire for his presence. And that needs a full circle. So cool. Anytime the anointing touches somebody, guess what? They want more of Jesus. How about you? Whenever God's touched your life in a big way, yeah. what does it do? It makes you want to know him more. It makes you want to get closer to him. It's wonderful. Praise God. So once again, if you're a Christ follower, you are anointed. But see, the anointing is what sets prisoners free. Yeah. It takes power. When somebody's been stuck for a long time, it takes power to break them free, don't it? It takes anointing. It takes anointing to break them free. You know, when somebody's sick or they've got a disease and the doctor says, well, you're done. The anointing will step into that place and, and take care of that disease that the doc, that people can't. The anointing 
It said, the Bible says, sickness runs from the anointing. Disease will flee from the anointing. You know, the worst disease in the world will yield to the anointing. It will. It just yields because it's God. He's the creator. He's the creator. He knows how to fix, he knows how to fix us when we're broke. You know, hope. This is a big one. You know, the anointing always births hope. Anytime the anointing touches somebody's life, hope is birthed because they have been touched by the living God, and with him all things are possible. You know, and that's really what hope's about. Hope's about all things are possible. Whatever I need, he can take care of it. He's got my future. He's got my next step. He's got everything. See, the anointing, anytime God touches you in any way through his power, hope is birthed. Because your God just became a little bigger, didn't he? You know, Jesus was our perfect example of God's presence and God's anointing. So let's talk, let's look at Jesus just a little bit. Okay, this is John 5:36. And this is Jesus speaking. He says, but I can provide a more substantial proof of who I am that exceeds John's testimony, my miracles. These works which the Father destined for me to complete, they prove that the Father has sent me. See, Jesus, who was filled with the Holy Spirit from, the, from, from conception in, the, in his mother's womb, he was full of the Holy Spirit. But then, guess what? The anointing expressed through him, confirmed that he's the Messiah, that he's the Son of God. Right. Every time God touches somebody's life through you, that anointing validates Jesus. It validates God. Okay. In another verse, John 14, 11, believe that I live as one with my Father and that my Father lives as one with me, or at least believe because of the mighty miracles I've done. You know, Jesus and the Father were one, and it's validated through the power of the anointing. You know, church, we, we, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit and walk in his power. And, you know, we, we have to. This isn't a season for us to get, you know, to get shy and quiet and back down. Okay. I'm just telling you, it's not the season for us to, you know, to, to, not, to not represent the Lord, you know, kind of dial it back a few notches. No. Shoot, no. People need Jesus today just like they need him yesterday, and they're going to need him tomorrow. Um, but I want to share with you something. You know, Jesus, whenever he went home, Whenever he had finished his life, his course perfectly, he died, was resurrected, and went back home. Guess what happened? At that moment, he transferred the earthly ministry to his church. You understand? He gave us the ministry. <laughs> do, do we know that? He gave us the ministry. He helps us with it, but he gave it to us. And that's why we need the Holy Spirit to help us. But I want to talk about that a little bit. This is... Uh, what he said as he was departing, because he knew we'd need it. He said, but stay here. Don't go out and start this ministry we've been talking about yet. Stay here in the city until the Holy Spirit comes and fills you with power from heaven. See, we, we, we need to be filled with the Holy Spirit to do what he's called us to do, because he gave us the ministry. And here it is. It's in 2 Corinthians, uh, let's see, I lost the thing on my, uh, 518. I wish there was another 3 or a 5 up there. <laughs> It says, and God has made all things new and reconciled us to himself. That's what Christ did. And then when he ascended, he has given us the ministry of reconciling others to God. It's our job, our responsibility to help people meet their Lord. Amen. That's good. That's our job. You know, just help people meet Jesus. You know, it's pretty simple. It's actually simpler than we make it. You know, we, we get it complicated. We got to do this. We got to do that. We got we to be the one that leads them up. We got to do that. No, you just got to be the one that loves them and represents Jesus. That's all. See, Jesus Jesus will do what they need done. He will meet them where they're at. Jesus, it doesn't matter what a person's need is, Jesus is it. You know, that's where you find the fulfillment of everything is through Christ. So he gave us the ministry of reconciliation. Okay. And so let's keep going. <clears throat> So what is this ministry? It? What is it and what does it look like? I've touched on that a little bit. Well, what, what is this thing he gave us, this responsibility he transferred us when he ascended back, back home? So Luke, uh, actually Luke 4, 18 and 19 and Acts 10, 38 help answer those questions. So here's, here's what Jesus did and what part of what he transferred to us. Okay, Jesus of Nazareth was anointed by God with the Holy Spirit and great power. He did wonderful things for others and divinely healed all who were under the tyranny of the devil, for God had anointed him. 
That's part of the ministry that fell to us, church. <laughs> we are to do wonderful things for others. That's pretty cool, isn't it? But guess what? We're also supposed to be praying for people to be healed. We're supposed to be doing our best to see them connect with Jesus whenever they need a healing, when they need an emotional healing, a physical healing. Because guess what? Sick ain't fun. Diseases ain't fun. They're not. You know, we need to care enough to pray. To, because when somebody's having their butt handed to them by a sickness or a disease, yeah. uh, I promise you they're, they're in a tough spot. Yeah. We need to get in there and try to help them with that as part of the ministry. Yeah. And it says, for God had anointed him. You see that? It's the anointing yeah. that breaks the yoke. It's the anointing that drives out the disease. It's the anointing that sets people free. Right. It's the anointing. You are anointed, Amen. Christian. Amen. And then Luke 4, 18 and 19. This is Jesus again. The Spirit of the Lord is upon me, and he has anointed me. Look at what the anointing does here. The anointing, <laughs> he anointed me to be hope for the poor. Freedom for the brokenhearted. New eyes for the blind. And to preach to prisoners. You're set free. I have come to share the message of Jubilee. For the time of God's great acceptance has begun. See, this is part of, another part of the ministry he gave us, church. You know, the anointing on your life is meant to give hope, to bring hope to those who need it. Yeah. You know, my gosh, it's freedom for the brokenhearted. Hmm. New eyes for the blind. You know, preach to the prisoners. You're set free. Tell people, hey, man, you don't have to, you don't have to roll around in that place anymore. Yeah. Come on, take my hand. Let's me, you, and Jesus move out of this spot. Right. The anointing will do that. Yeah. It'll do that. But that's part of the ministry he gave us, the ministry of reconciliation. You know, those are parts of that. And we're also to do all that plus a whole lot more. Because Jesus said in John 14, 12, I'll tell you this timeless truth. The person who follows me in faith, believing in me, will do the same mighty miracles that I do, even greater miracles than these, because I go to be with my Father. See, we're supposed to do everything Jesus did and more. Boy, that's that's tall order, and that's yeah. that's big. But that's because there was one Jesus. There's millions and millions of us, church. There's millions of us filled with the Holy Spirit and anointed with power. Yeah. So we can do exactly what he said. Because the Lord himself works with us. See, if it was just us, we couldn't do it. But the Lord works with us. Here's an example from the first apostles in Mark 16, 20. It says, And the apostles went out announcing the good news everywhere, as the Lord himself consistently worked with them, validating the message they preached with miracle signs that accompanied them. You know, when you're out there and you're representing Jesus and you're loving people and you're trying to you know, help them get what they need, you know, you'll be surprised at what God does through you. I'm telling you, I have been surprised so many times whenever I, you know, I show up and, you know, on my best day, and I'm like, yeah, I'm here, let's pray. And then, man, I'll just see God come through. I'm like, whoop. Wow, man, you did so much more than I thought. Wow, isn't that amazing? When we, get, when, we, when we step into that spot and rely on him, that anointing will just, boom, it'll connect right where they need him. And something happens. It's amazing. So you just keep serving Jesus, church. Amen. Keep serving Jesus, church. You'll do it. And so I'm going to share one little testimony from my past. Um, I was in the military, and I was about to be deployed to Iraq, and we were doing pre-deployment training. And it was not a good time of year, and we were doing it at Fort Jackson in Columbia, South Carolina. And it was, uh, <laughs> it was actually in uh, December. Uh, I think, wait a minute, let me see here. It's been a long time ago. No, I think it was actually uh, Jan. Yeah, Jan, thank you. See, she's got a good memory. <laughs> Cheryl helps me remember so much, church. I love it. She's a sweetie. Um, so anyway, it was January because I believe her, uh, and we were doing we were doing pre-deployment training at Fort Jackson, and it was raining every day. I was there. Wow. It was raining and it was staying in the 30s to 40s. Ooh. And those of you who've been outside know that is the worst weather to be wet in. Yeah. yeah. When it's in the 30s and 40s, I mean, you just walk around freezing all the darn time. So anyway. I'm out on this, we're, we're doing some stuff with, with rifles, so we're on the rifle range, and we're doing some other things, and I'm talking to these two guys about Jesus. 
were standing there in the rain in our ponchos. It was not fun. And so I'm talking to them about Jesus, and they, and you know, I shared the gospel with them, shared the scriptures, and they just what they just were like they were on the edge. They're like right here on the edge, like I'm here. They're like, yeah, but I just don't know. Um, I'm just not sure. It's like they're on the edge, but they just wouldn't step. Yeah. Both of them, and both of them were the same. And so I jumped down on them. Did I pray about what I'm? I'm, I'm going to share something with you. I didn't ask God about this. I didn't ask God okay. because I know that He's not willing that any should perish. You understand? God, you be bold. He'll step in. Don't be stupid, but be bold. He'll step in and help. I said, I said, guys, how about this? This was after days of being in the rain. I said, how about this, guys? I said, if God stops this rain right now, if he stops this rain right now, would you believe? And they looked at each other like, whoa. Wow. They didn't know how to respond. They said, well, yeah. I said, okay. What well, is? I looked up and I said, Lord, that these would believe. That's all I said, Lord, that these would believe. And when I said it, it looked like literally a line went across the, the whole sky. Wow. It pushed back and the sun came out. The rain stopped. And both of them looked at me like, and I, I said, do you believe now? I said, yeah, let's pray. Both of them trusted Christ. Now, we think, oh, that was, that was awesome and bad. That was huge. Yes, it was. But was that hard for God? No. Was those two souls worth it? Yeah. 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 Praise God. But you know, God, I don't think we see more. I don't think we see as much as we could, church, because we don't boldly step into those spots often enough. I believe if we boldly just get in that spot and rely on Jesus to meet that need. I think we're going to see more than we thought we'd see. I think he's going to do more than we think he'll do. He will. He'll come through. He'll come through. Mm, praise God. You know, Christians, who else will share the words of life if we don't? I mean, think about it. Who else is going to represent Jesus if we don't? There's nobody. Who else is empowered to consistently see the sick healed if we don't pray, if we don't trust God for that? You know? Who else other than a, than a blood-bought Christian can really introduce somebody to Jesus Christ. You know, either you trust him as Lord, you've been bought by the blood, or you haven't. You know, you, there, there's no middle ground with that. And if you've trusted Christ as Savior, guess what? We're the ones who are to represent him to help people meet him. Because we can, we can actually speak from experience about our Lord. You know, when somebody's life's falling apart, who else? can introduce them to the one who really can help. But us, church, we're it. We're it. You know, we're his mouth. We're his mouth. We're his feet. We're his hands. We are. Yeah, he partners with us, and yes, he empowers us. But we're it, church. We're the only game on the earth. I'm just telling you. If we don't do it, ain't nobody going to do it. So, and I know I'm poking a little bit today, but and it isn't because we're doing great. We've got a great group of people. I mean, seriously, we do a lot of great stuff. We're a blessing. But I just really feel like today there is so much going on in the earth, and there's so many people now who are telling, you know, the Christians, you need to be quiet. You need to be quiet, or you just need to embrace every friggin' thing we tell you to embrace, or else. There's only one Bible, church. It ain't being rewritten. You know, what we got is what we got. And, and I like to say that I that I, every time I read the whole, you know, the entire scripture, every time I read I'm like, oh, that's wonderful. Oh, yeah, I'm doing that. Oh, that's great. That's a lie. I mean, sometimes I read stuff and I say, ah, yeah. ah, that hurt. But guess what? He's right. <laughs> it, you know, it, sometimes I read stuff and it isn't always comfortable to me. No, I mean, God pokes me. He's like, they ain't a work on that. They ain't a deal with that. I'm like, yes, sir. He's my creator. You know, he's the creator. I'm not. He's the one. I have to do what he says. Yeah. You know? Because, I mean, you know, the thing is, whatever you do, when you live according to the word of God, the best you can, none of us measure up all the way. None of us can. But when you do the best you can, guess what? You stay in a place of life, in a place of provision, in a place of sweetness. You do. It's not always easy. I'm telling you, man, there's times I grit my teeth when I read the word. I'm like, man, God, that really got me. Yeah, and, and, and I'm sure the Holy Spirit's like, good. What are we going to do with that? 
I love God. You know, the Lord's never required anything of me that when I gave it, I wasn't glad on the other side. Yeah. It was terrible on the front end sometimes, but on the other side, it's like, wow, thank you, God, for freedom. Yeah. You know, because I've said this a couple times over the last few weeks. See, it's for freedom that Christ set us free. And everything in his word sets us free, little by little, to be more like Jesus. So the Bible says here in Romans 10, 14, it says, but how can people call on him for help if they have, have not yet believed? And how can they believe in one they've not yet heard of? And how can they hear the message of life if there's no one there to proclaim it? That's Paul poking us with a stick, isn't he? Yep. <laughs> he said, look, if you don't tell them, nobody's going to tell them. How are they going to believe? Oh. Yeah, I, you know, I love everybody. I mean, this, like I said, when I was preparing this, I, was, I got more motivated myself to do more, I promise you. Look, Christians, if there was ever a season for us to shine brightly, this is it. Amen. You know, I had not been around that long. I'm 54, but I'm going to tell you something. I have never seen a time in my life personally where there was more unrest, more stress, more stuff going on. You know, you know, people are in tough spots right now. A lot of people are hurting. Yeah. A lot of people are upset. You know, a lot of people are either isolated. A lot of people are, you know, a lot of people have health conditions and they're afraid. I mean, they're home, yeah. you know, because they, they're trying to take care of themselves and bless them. You know, I support that. But you think about what's going on. Look, look just, just think of for a second. Don't think too long because I want us to stay in here. But just think about, think about what's going on outside these walls right now. Yeah, yeah. People are afraid. People are scared. Some people are sick. Sure. People are dealing with tough things. They're in tough places. Church, this is our moment. Okay. We'll have a lot more after this, but this is a big deal. Yeah. You keep on smiling. When, when people can, if they can't see you through the mask, you smile with your eyes. Let them see you smiling. Mm -hmm. Let them see you happy. Let them see you walking in a different spot. You know, all of us are getting enough negativity. Yeah. Be nice. Let's just be sweet. I say this a lot of times, stay sweet. That's simple. Just stay sweet. It's amazing, man. I know this. I know when I see somebody smile at me, my heart warms up. My heart's like, oh, that was nice. How about you? It does. It's like, wow, I don't know what they're happy about, but that felt good. <laughs> it does. You know it. You know it. Man. What about when somebody's walking around, I'm moving out. Can't watch somebody going. Yeah. What does your heart do with that one? Not much. <laughs> but when you see somebody like, just smile like, yeah. And you're like, hmm, that's nice. Yeah. Isn't it amazing? It's all of it, church. It's the smiles. It's the kind words. Yeah. It's the pats on the back. It's the generosity. Yeah. It's the phone calls. It's the text. It's the showing you care. Yeah. It's all of that. It's all of that. And it's being bold whenever there's a big need, jump in there and say, oh, no. Yeah. I don't know what, what God's going to do, but darn it, I'm not going to sit here and watch you go through this alone. Yeah. Yeah. See, well, let's see what Jesus will do. Oh, you don't know him yet? Well, how about this? How about you just see what he does, and I'm going to ask him. Come on. You know, I've been amazed that, that people who, when they're in a tough spot, they're open to prayer. Yeah. You know what? <laughs> it's amazing. I mean... I can't tell you how many times I've met somebody in a different spot, and, and the Lord said, you need to pray with them, you need to talk with them. And I go over there, and they're like, hey. And I introduced us, can I pray with you? I did that one time on the ferry. It's been a while back. And the uh, Lord pointed out this guy. He was in this super nice suit, and he was driving this really nice car. And, and I, you know, I pull up in there in my little red you know, antique truck next to him, and I just look over and smile. And, uh, yeah, my truck was running better at that time. <laughs> but... Uh, so anyway, I looked over and smiled when I looked over and the Holy Spirit said, he needs prayer. I said, wow. And I was about to get out of the truck and he went upstairs, you know, because we were on the ferry. He came back down when he got in his car. I said, man, we got just a few minutes. I said, I went over and knocked on his window. He rolled down his window and I said, hey. I said, my name, and I introduced myself. I said, can I pray with you? He said, I've never done that. I said, well, you don't have to. Yeah. I, said, I said, I just want to pray for you. And so I said, can I hold your hand? He reached over and took my hand. And I prayed I prayed with him and blessed him in Jesus' name. Yeah, yeah. And he just looked at me, and you could tell God had touched his heart. Uh -huh. yeah. It wasn't anything, It was a specific prayer. It was just the fact that I loved him enough yeah, yeah. to call on the name of the Lord for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 
Don't minimize what you, your impact is. Don't you ever do that. You're anointed. You're anointed, church. Mm. See, I'm not asking, if you're a Christian, I'm not asking you to do anything different. Please hear that. What I'm asking, I'm asking you to please be exactly who you were recreated yes. to be. Yes, yes. Amen. Yes. Yes. Yeah, you were recreated to do great things. Yes. Great things. Yes. Big things. Life changing things. Mm. Yes. Amen. So I'm going to close out the message today with two things. The first thing is we're going to have a group prayer. Okay, it's a group prayer. It's actually the same prayer the disciples pray together in Acts chapter 4. And then we're going to do a proclamation at that. So here's our group prayer. I'm glad it's not at the top of the screen. I can get it all in there. So here we go. This is Acts chapter 4, the second half of verse 29 and verse 30. So on the count of three, let's boldly pray this together. Okay? I'm trying to get out of your sight. I'm up in the hole here. Amen. Right. So here we go. One, two, three. Empower, Empower us as, as your servants to speak the word of God freely and courageously. Stretch out your hand in power to heal and move in signs and wonders by the name of your holy son, Jesus. Amen. Yeah, that's right. Thank you, God. Amen. Amen. Thank you, God. And now... We're going to have a, that was a prayer. Now we're going to do a proclamation. That means we're just declaring something over our lives and over this group. Here we go. On the count of three. One, two, three. I refuse to be ashamed of sharing the wonderful message of God's liberating power unleashed in us through Christ. For I am thrilled to preach that everyone who believes is saved. Amen. 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 Do you, do you refuse to be ashamed of Jesus today? Amen. That's right. You wear the most na noble name. Ain't nobody's had a name better than Christian. Praise God. Praise God. So let me close this in prayer. Amen. Man, yeah, this is wonderful. Let's pray. Oh, Lord. Jesus, I ask that you'd remove any shy or timid spirit from every believer who calls the gateway home. God, also pray the same for all of your children across the world. God, cause your people to boldly rise up and proclaim your truth. Love people. And Lord, be who we were recreated to be. Mm. Lord, your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And everybody said, Amen. Amen. Thank you.